All right, exciting news. We're announcing this week a brand new scholarship opportunity from Med School Insiders that rewards students for prioritizing balance and wellness in their life. More on that at the end of the video. Far too often, students take pride in burnout, seeing how little sleep they can get or how much they can push their bodies. Ultimately, this results in poor performance in all aspects of your life, and it can lead to burnout and serious health concerns, which I experienced firsthand in college. Now, while working with my team to develop the Med School Insider Scholarship, I reflected on my own college days, and here are eight things I wish I did differently in college. Do not make the same mistakes I did, you've been warned. So first up is not pursuing leadership opportunities sooner. When it came to social events, I generally just attended them rather than planning events myself. I thought that, hey, you know, I don't need to found an organization, I can just participate. But you learn so much about yourself when you take on leadership. You learn more when you do the planning yourself and you draw people into your circle. You become the social hub of your friend group when you're the one who's planning events, outings, experiences, etc. And there's a lot of value to that. I only really started doing this a little bit in med school and afterwards, doing things like organizing car events like autocross as an example. And I wish I did this sooner. Now, I couldn't have done exactly this in college because you need a car to do autocross, but I could have done something similar like starting a car club in college to meet more people with similar interests and then network and spend more time on my passions. For so many years, since I was in med school, I wanted to start a car YouTube channel, but I only took the leap and started that channel literally last year. By the way, you should go check that out. Jabal and Cars linked below. Number two is way too much binge drinking early on in college. This is of course before I was diagnosed with IBD because once I got diagnosed with IBD, no more binge drinking. But I went full tilt into the freedom and I overdid it. And generally speaking, it's a very common thing in college because you feel very restricted when you're in high school and then college, all right, all bets are off and you finally can, can release and unleash the inner animal, if you will. But I remember blacking out a couple times. Well, maybe I shouldn't say remember. It just feels like such a waste of the night because you don't know what happened, you don't know whether or not you had fun. And blacking out just felt so terrible. And then the next day, I also felt so terrible because I had the worst hangover imaginable. I wish I instead took a much more mature approach and slowly approached my limits rather than just blasting past them. Number three is I regret sucking at studying so much because I thought I had everything figured out when it came to studying because I was a really good student. I crushed it in high school and you know, that's not really saying much because high school, let's be real, really easy. And what I would generally do is either practice questions when that was assigned for like physics or chemistry and everything else was just reading and rereading my notes over and over again, thinking that was studying effectively. Doing those practice questions for physics and chemistry, very helpful, which I did it for more subjects. And I didn't even know about flashcards until med school. But the main thing here, I mean, again, I did very well in college as I've talked about in other videos, but I would have saved so much more time and still gotten the same grades, the same performance, if I embraced those active studying methods sooner because they're way more effective. By having better study strategies, as soon as I started med school, it would have been a much easier transition. I remember the first two months of med school, I was just like studying nonstop with my good buddy, Amit Pandey, just like went hard, even Friday nights, we just went hard into the books. Not necessary. This is something that I'm personally very passionate about because a lot of students, they study so terribly and then they suffer as a result and it's so easily fixable. So we did make a whole, we have all these videos and a whole series, a whole playlist on the Med School Insiders channel, which you can find linked below, that guides you through how to do studying correctly. Number four is that I regret over committing early on in college. Starting off college, I'm like coming in hot, really, really like, hey, let's like, let's tackle this. And I took only three classes from the advice of my brother. And he was like, don't come in too hot. There's a lot to adjust to, just do three classes. And it felt a little bit too easy that first quarter. So then in my winter quarter, my second quarter, I took on four classes, but two of those classes were also much harder than the other classes I took in my first quarter. And that was a really intense quarter. That was actually the same quarter that my IBD flared up for the first time. So, you know, I'm not saying that taking four classes is what caused my IBD, obviously not. There's genetic factors, family history, stress, other, you know, a lot of things, family stuff, but that definitely didn't help. That actually reminds me, my English class, there was this, uh, he wasn't even a professor, he was like a grad student that was teaching this small group of like 20 students for, for English. And <laughs> Sandeep was his name. And you would think that we have like a connection, you know, the Indian Brotherhood, but no, 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 no. This guy was, this guy was not cool, man. So. I missed two weeks of my 10 week quarter because I got hospitalized and then I had to recover. I lost 40 pounds, guys. I'm, I'm like not, I was, I was like this before IBD and then I lost 40 pounds. So I looked pretty bad. And my other classes, you know, the professors were understanding for chemistry. Hey, you missed your midterm, no worries. Your final is just gonna count for your whole grade. All right, sure, let's go, let's rock. And Sandeep, you know, I got, 
I got A's or A pluses on every single essay. Cause I'm like, yo, let's, let's go. I was pretty fired up. I was pretty fired up after getting sick. I was like, I'm going to crush everything. Let's fucking rock this. And he gave me a B and I was like, dude, what gives? I got A's on everything. He's like, oh, well you missed two weeks and then therefore your participation suffers and I can't give you an A without the participation is an important part of your overall grade. I'm like, bro, I was here for eight weeks. I missed two weeks because I was hospitalized with a lifelong condition, lost 40 pounds from an already light frame. And when I was there for those other eight weeks, I crushed participation. And he's like, yeah, sorry, man. Just like, you know, it's just the, the way it works. Can't, can't give you an A. And uh, anyways, kind of just got to roll with it. At the time that infuriated me so much. I was like, I hate this person. It filled me with rage, but things worked out. I crushed college, got into a great med school. Like not a big deal. So if I could do it again, I would ease more into the beginning of college and you know pursue excellence in everything you do because sure you're adding on your classes, but then you're also gonna add on research, you're gonna add on other social commitments, etc. And you don't wanna overdo any one of those multiple facets, right? So I wish I just eased into it. It would have been way more manageable. Number five is I regret not being able to forgive both myself and others. Now in college, I'm already a pretty rigid person, but in college, I was even more rigid in my thinking. And if I made a mistake, I took it to heart. I had a tough time moving on and forgiving myself, which made me suffer more than necessary. And I felt the same way about other people. If they did something that I deemed unforgivable, that was it. They were not gonna be forgiven. They weren't in my life anymore, Fuck them. It was only later I had the clarity to be like, dude, everyone makes mistakes, including myself, and we all have moments where we lack clear judgment. And there's this thing called attribution bias, whereby, we attribute other people's mess ups and issues to flaws of their character versus results of circumstance. Whereas for us, we do the opposite. And it was only later in life that I learned how unhealthy and corrosive resentment is. And it's still something that I'm, I'm working on, right? There are still certain people that I have to like practice the forgiveness and I think that I've forgiven them, but then months later, like some stuff comes back up and I'm like, all right, I gotta work through this again. But the key thing is that you're not forgiving them because they deserve forgiveness. You're forgiving them for yourself, for your inner peace. Number six is I regret not taking healthy exercise as seriously. So in college, I took on so much with other things, with extracurriculars and research and school that I didn't prioritize exercise. I mean, compared to the average person, I was way more active. I mean, I was on a dance team. We we're practicing three, four times a week, very intense cardio. I hit the gym, strength training, probably on average, like three times a week, even though I wanted to do five times a week, but I missed a lot. That was the issue. It's just that my expectations back then compared to what I think now were completely divergent, right? And I think part of it is your upbringing because in my family, my parents didn't really exercise. So, or they exercise very little. So when I was doing three days a week of strength training and three days a week of cardio, I'm like, dude, I'm so on top of things, but it's like, dude, you're missing almost half your workouts. You should be lifting five days a week if you wanna have the adequate volume and gains and all that stuff. And the issue is back then I would just make excuses. I would wait until later in the day to exercise and then, oh, school's more important. Or, oh, this thing, like my sleep, this research deadline, whatever. And it just was lower on the priority list. But looking back, I'm like, that's so silly. I had so much time. If I just exercised first thing in the morning, I would have crushed. Now, post-medicine in my thirties, yeah, now I'm taking exercise way more seriously. I'm spending like on average three, sometimes even closer to four hours a day between my stretching, my strength training and my cardio. And like, I feel great. But the thing is, the sooner you start the, the habits and you implement them into your life, the easier it is to sustain them. You can exercise every day if you want to, if you make it a priority. And the issue was that I just didn't make it a priority. And for a moment, let's just ignore all the various health benefits. What would have really resonated with me was understanding that it's gonna help me with my confidence. It's gonna help me with my dating life. The things that I was struggling with back then as a college student, it would have helped so tremendously. And so it wasn't until senior year, cause I got into my dream school, UCSD, in September. And after that, that's when I opened up all the other experiences that I was holding myself back from in college. And I didn't have to hold myself back from them. That's, that's the sad part. So I started going to all, all these raves and like trying new experiences and dating a little bit. And I got really into powerlifting and I gained a lot of weight. I tracked every single thing I ate, tracking all my macros. I was hitting the gym, not missing any workouts and gained a lot of weight, gained a lot of strength. And in, in certain ways, I might've gotten a little bit too intense. I ended up injuring my back but I could have been consistent and found a better middle ground earlier in college. Number seven is that I regret not pursuing my passion for cars sooner in life. I should have prioritized that because as a kid, when I was three years old, one of my earliest memories was my granddad teaching me how to draw a car. And for whatever reason, when I was as early as I can remember, I just remember loving cars. And in elementary school, I loved drawing. It was like Dragon Ball Z and cars, Dragon Ball Z and cars. And in, uh, in middle school, 
I would draw cars for other kids and then sell it for their lunch money. Like I was just obsessed with cars and I had an RC car and like cars were just my life. And I read every car and driver magazine, you know, front to back. But then in college, especially after I got sick, I was just so singularly focused on being a kick-ass gastroenterologist. And a lot of my passions just kind of fell to the wayside. A lot of these things are related, right? So if I actually studied better, I would have had so much time. I, I brute forced my way to having stellar grades and kicking ass on the MCAT. It wasn't because, you know, I had everything figured out. It was because I just studied and worked so freaking hard. And if I had that more dialed in, I would have had more free time and I could have prioritized more car stuff and like gone to car meets or, you know, even though you're, you don't need a car to go to car meets, you don't need a car to enjoy the hobby, to start a car club, to, you know, it's something that I'm now getting back in touch with. And if, you know, throughout my home, I, I have a lot of like model cars or car posters. I have a room that's just dedicated to my sim racing rig. I have a YouTube channel that's focused on cars. Like I could have explored that more in college and it would have brought me so much more joy. I mean, even drawing, I took an Academy of Art class in car design in San Francisco when I was in ninth grade during the summer. And um, like in college, I would kind of doodle sometimes when I was bored but I could have really pushed that further and explored that. Pursue the passions you enjoy and take advantage of the time that you have in college because you're never gonna have more time than you do now. And number eight is that I regret my completely shit sleep habits. I took pride in my sleep deprivation and sometimes, you know, I was very rigid about always wanting to go to class. So I would sometimes go to class and then just fall asleep. I mean, like literally my friends and I had an album on our phones where it would just, each other falling asleep in class, which is such a waste of time because you're not gonna be, you're not gonna get as restful of sleep and then you're not learning anything and then you wasted the time just to walk there and back. Really stupid. I was one of those kids that would say, you know, I'll sleep when I'm dead and sleep is a waste of time and stupid things like that. And contrary to what a lot of college students think, sleep deprivation, it's not something to be proud of. It just, it shows that you suck at time management and sleep deprivation causes a lot of issues long-term, but even short-term. Like it can exacerbate things like depression and anxiety, reduce cognition, worsen memory, weight gain, high blood pressure, increased risk of heart disease. Like when you just zoom out and look at things logically, it's such a stupid behavior. Unfortunately now, thanks to people like Andrew Huberman and just the democratization of a lot of this kind of science and the data we have with YouTube and bringing awareness to these issues, I hope and I think that we're getting better than we were 10 years ago when it comes to managing our sleep and having a healthier habit or a healthier relationship rather with sleep. So more and more, I'm realizing that life is a journey and that's something that my college self didn't really understand. I was so focused on where I was headed, but I didn't think to actually enjoy the present. It only hit me at 20, I still remember, I was in my apartment, I just moved to Las Vegas and I didn't really have a next step in my career. Like. I realized that I could do anything I wanted. I can set my own schedule. I can work whenever I want. I can take a Wednesday off and then work on a Sunday instead. And it was kind of an epiphany. And I realized that I'd been so focused on the next step, you know, one after another and so on, that I wasn't appreciating the moment and that there is no then. Your life, your happiness, your enjoyment, it's now. It's not like, it's not like tomorrow or five years from now is gonna be substantially different than now. The texture of your mind is the texture of your mind. I heard this saying that if you can't enjoy a coffee, you can't enjoy a yacht. It's not your internal circumstances, it's your internal state. And part of that too can even be embracing like the intensity of certain seasons of your life. It's not just becoming a doctor, it's like the journey that leads you there. It is this rich experience of like ups and downs and relationships and you know, these amazing friends and these amazing mentors. It's, and then sometimes you'll get backstabbed or sometimes you'll have a negative experience too, but it's like, it's a beautiful journey overall. And I'm at least grateful that I had glimpses of that. Like I loved medical school. Medical school was so intense, but enjoyable. And again, there was ups and downs, but I look very fondly on that time in my life. And having that blank slate when I quit residency, that tabula rasa, it was a bit unnerving, a bit exciting, a bit like a lot of mixed emotions. And that's part of the fun too. All right, now onto the scholarship. Med School Insiders is awarding $3,000 of services to two students who share their experiences successfully balancing school and a healthy lifestyle. So when you take care of yourself, you perform better, you're also better equipped to take care of others. And we think that's something to celebrate and to encourage. So to learn more about the Med School Insiders Balance and Wellness Scholarship, visit medschoolinsiders.com forward slash scholarship. Much love and good luck. <laughs>